Mariko Tamaki writing Wonder Woman. Why, Hera, why? Coming to paperback and e-readers this April, Isis, the main event. It's carnage inside of a steel cage as the goddess next door steps in the squared circle against the beast from the falls in this all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, the main event this April. I was watching a video by YouTuber Thinking Critical where he discussed writer Mariko Tamaki taking over the Wonder Woman title in June. And... This decision to have Mariko Tamaki start writing the Wonder Woman comic couldn't come at a worse time for DC Comics or Warner Brothers or its parent, AT&T. Now, the decision to bring a new writer on the Wonder Woman comic is a good one, but Mariko Tamaki is the absolute wrong person to bring on the title. And the reason why she's the wrong person to be working on a Wonder Woman comic is because when you take a critical examination of her runs on the Jen Walters Hulk book, which is supposed to be gender fluid, and the X-23 book that she was working on a few years ago with Marvel, she just does not know how to craft a story in the superhero genre. Now, your Mariko Tamaki is a better fit on comics that are a slice of life, and when she tries to write action comics, like the Hulk book she tried to do and the X-23 book she tried to do, she tends to focus too much on all of those slice-of-life moments. And that really slows down the action in a comic book. And with this being a comic related to a major motion picture, what DC Comics and Warner Brothers really should want to do is try to leave a strong first impression on new readers. And you want to make sure that the comic is just like the movie and features action just like in, that's going to be in Patty Jenkins' movie so that when readers come into the comic, they see that, they're, that where the source material is just like the movies. And I don't think that Mariko Tanaki is going to be able to do that Effectively, when I look at her previous work on Hulk and X-23, because on both of those books, they had very little action and a whole lot of exposition. Most of these books that she had written, X-23 and Hulk, were primarily focused on people sitting around talking and had lots and lots of scenes of talking heads. And that's not what superhero movie fans want to see, and that's not what comic fans want to see. What comic fans want to see and what superhero fans want to see is lots of action. They want to see Princess Diana taking on her bad guys, like the Cheetah, like Ares, like Dr. Psycho, and many others. And they want to see her using all of her powers that she received from the gods. That's what people want to see in a Wonder Woman comic, but that's not probably what we're going to get in a Mariko Tamaki Wonder Woman comic because her pacing is very slow. Her sequences are all about things like cooking, and there's a lot of dis discussions and dialogue about food. And that's not what people pay money to see in a Wonder Woman comic Again, people come to a Wonder Woman comic to see Princess Diana going out here and fighting her bad guys, and I don't think we're going to get that from a Mariko Tamaki run on the book, which again is coming at the worst time for the Wonder Woman comic with Wonder Woman 84 opening on the same month and Warner Brothers looking to try to synergize the two there's no synergy when you hire the absolute wrong writer for the book. Now, this decision to hire Mariko Tamaki for Wonder Woman, this was one of the last decisions by your Dan Didio before he was fired at DC Comics. And it just shows how grossly incompetent he was as a publisher to hire this woman without ever taking a minute to read any of her work and see if it would be a good fit for one of DC's flagship characters during a time when they are about to launch a major motion picture. No, when it comes down to a flagship character and a major motion picture, 
I'm not, I would, as if I were editor in chief of DC Comics or a publisher, I'm not looking to hire somebody who has already failed twice with two other B list characters at Marvel. No, I want to go find Greg Rucka or I want to go find George Perez or one of these other people who have worked on some of the great Wonder Woman runs and have them start the book when we're starting to launch the movie. Then, once we have gone past the six to eight month period after the movie has come out, then I would want to try to bring in another qualified writer to work on the characters. Because when I look at that decision by your Dan Didio, it just was so incompetent, it wasn't funny. I mean, if, the, if you guys thought the 5G decision was bad, this one was even worse because he has not only damaged the Wonder Woman character, possibly, but he has also damaged the Wonder Woman brand by hiring someone who clearly is not qualified to write the character and put them on a book that, and knowing that their track record for writing action is very weak. Because what you want on a book with a heroine is a writer who can go out here and write heroines that, and make them appear to be strong so that when people come out here and they come out of a movie and they go to the comic, they have a very strong first impression of the character. And from that experience with that first book, they start to get the incentive to go out here and buy the next book or go through the back issues and look for previous books. That's what you want when you are trying to synergize a movie with a comic. But your Dan Didio, he was so caught up in trying to appease Brian Michael Bendis by hiring the people who used to work at formerly what's called SJW Marvel, that he brought in someone who clearly was going to be a poor fit for the character, again, during a major motion picture and a time when they're trying to take this intellectual property and elevate it to a higher level. So this is, again, one of the reasons why I believe Dan Didio was fired, was not only his decision to try to change all the characters with 5G, it was also bringing in bad writers like your Kelly Sue DeConnick on Aquaman and G. Willow Wilson on Wonder Woman and leading to them having major sales declines. And I don't think that your Mariko Tamaki is going to get Wonder Woman sales up based on her previous track record as related to Hulk and X-23. No, what Wonder Woman needs right now is a qualified writer who can go out here and write heroines and write a start the series in June with the start of a character transformation arc that shows us why Princess why we need Princess Diana, why Wonder Woman is important, and why we should care about Wonder Woman and why Wonder Woman matters in a world filled with strong women. Because one of the things when I was writing my outline for a Wonder Woman run was when I looked at the character critically, I would say to myself, we live in a, po in a post-feminist world where we have all of these empowered women. And I wanted to answer the question, what makes Wonder Woman stand out? Why we should care about Wonder Woman? And what is what would make Wonder Woman's mission important in this world of these strong and empowered women? Because... When I look at the character, I don't see writers trying to answer those kind of questions because they are just so busy trying to get caught up in the whole feminism and empowerment thing that they're not understanding that there are good women and there are bad women. And we have a world where, again, the, the women have a lot of power these days, but a lot of those women aren't using that power responsibly. And some of these women are abusing that power, and they're using that power to exploit others, like some of these teachers who take advantage of teenage boys and other female predators out here who look to use people. And I wanted to show, if from my proposed run, that your Wonder Woman was important because she represented a woman who wanted to do right, a woman who understood that with that power comes responsibility, and somebody has to take responsibility to protect others from other dangerous female predators. That's something that I really 
have not seen explored too much in today's Wonder Woman comics. It's all about showing you a strong woman, but not giving you any balance, as I see it, as related to showing you, yes, there are women who have power, but then there are women who abuse their power, and like those who work in corporate America, or those who are a part of the social justice narratives, or those who are a part of other different agendas. And there's a way of making that storyline fresh and exciting without making it preachy and filled with identity politics. That's something I was able to do with the Isis series that I currently write right now, where the, I have the goddess next door. She's out here being an all-American girl next door who goes where she's needed, helps out those who need help, and deals with different things as related to uh, the world. And one of the things I'd see that's missing from Wonder Woman, again, is that it just is the book is really bland from what I've read. I've read the G. Willow Wilson books. I've read the... Steve Orlando books, and they're very bland. They're not very fresh or exciting. And the big problem is, is that they're not very compelling. They don't really give you any incentive to go pick up that next issue. They don't give you a story that makes you care. And there's not there's nothing there that really pops to you. I mean, when you look at the books, they're just very they're just very by the numbers, very generic. And there's nothing there that makes you say, I really want to like this character. I really am excited about this character. And that's something that I would love to bring to the characters, bring something fresh, something exciting to the character, and give you action and adventure like I do with my Isis series books, like Isis All That Glitters or Isis Wrath of the Cyber Goddess, which was basically a revamp of, doc of the Dr. Cyber character. That's where I got the idea for Dr. from the Cyber Goddess from, from Dr. Cyber, a obscure Wonder Woman villain that I thought could have taken herself to the A-list had she been written properly. And when I look at the Wonder Woman book, I see a lot of potential, but the big problem with the Wonder Woman character is that they just keep saddling her with these writers who just really don't want to take the character in a fresh direction or put a fresh take on the character while staying true to the character's roots and the character's history. Again, I look at the world and I look at it and I see it as you have in this post-feminist world where it's extremely gynocentric, you have all of these strong and powerful women. And again, the questions that need to be asked is what, where does Wonder Woman stand in a world of these strong and powerful women, women who have power in different ways and women who may not be acting in the best interest of people overall, because Wonder Woman is supposed to be a protector and a heroine who goes out and tries to do the best for people, who loves people and cares for people, and she doesn't, she should be really having some conflicts here as related to these empowered women, because the island of Themyscira, or Paradise Island, all the women are ideally used to working together, and here she has to deal with these different types of women who share similar political beliefs, but then go in a completely different direction. There's a lot of stories there, and these writers, they're not really exploring it the way that they're supposed to. I mean, G. Willow Wilson, she just gave us a bunch of feminist tropes. She, she did an incredibly meandering story with the cheetah and some sort of sword that she had, and I, it just went nowhere. And Steve Orlando is trying to do something, but he's not really getting any traction. I mean, I like what I'm seeing with some of his stories, but it's just not getting that traction. It just doesn't have that spark. And there's there's just not there anything there to give you that heat. And the character definitely needs to get a couple of stories that give you some big heat, some, some big sparks, and get you really into it. And that's, that's something, if I were writing the book, I would be doing something, again, starting something like a Isis Wrath of the Cyber Goddess type story, trying to bring in Dr. Cyber or bring in some Cheetahs type story, or doing something like All That Glitters, where I showcase the character in a way that makes the character strong and leaves a strong impression on people. And again, I don't see G. Willow Wilson giving us anything that gives us that strong impression based on her extremely passive writing style in the past, her slice-of-life type writing. And what this one, and you're doing Wonder Woman, you want to start out with fast-paced action from page one, 
and get people compelled until the point where they've gotten to page 20 and they're ready and anticipating the next issue. And that's not something I see coming from a Mariko Tamaki. No, I, when I look at Mariko Tamaki and I look at what she did with X-23, how she practically neutered that character and how she had Jen Walters, one of Marvel's strongest and sexiest women, turned into a complete bore. This is not the writer you want to have on your flagship heroine during a time when you are launching a major motion picture. No, you really need to have a qualified writer who can come in and not only make the character ha have that strong first impression, so the people who come out of the movies come to the comic book store, and you really want to make that strong first impression to the point where the character becomes relatable to today's readers. So they say, hey, I like this Wonder Woman character, excuse me, from the movies. I like what I'm seeing in the comic. And she's in our world today. And I'm dealing, she's dealing with problems I'm dealing with. She's dealing with problems I'm dealing with in life. And she's having struggles that I'm dealing with. And she's strong because she has the strength of character to persevere in the face of all of those adversities. And those are things that I put in many of my books, not only the Isis series and the East Team series, but in books like Spellbound and the Thetas, which feature strong heroines. And again, I don't see any of that internal strength in any of Mariko Tamaki's previous work. And if I look at her previous work and I look at her current, and I, that's how I'm judging her current work at. And when I look at that and I say, you're going to launch this new book in June, I don't expect it to, to be well. And I expect it to be just as bad as anything that came out of SJW Marvel. Now, if you want to pick up my books that feature heroines like the Isis series, the E-Steam series, the Thetas, or the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, Spinsterella, Spellbound, and The Legendary Mag Matilda, you can pick up all of those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle formats. And if you want to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, and my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, Isis, All That Glitters. The Goddess Next Door takes on a bikini-clad bank robber in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, All That Glitters, paperback and Kindle Unlimited today.